Polls opened in Argentina just hours ago and are scheduled to close at 6 p.m. local time. Official preliminary results are expected at around 7.30 p.m. local time. 32 million registered voters are expected to cast their ballots. Argentines will decide between the Peronist ruling Front for Victory Party candidate Daniel Scholli or the neoliberal U.S.-oriented and business-friendly right-wing candidate Mauricio Macri. The new president will be sworn in on December 10th for a four-year term. I think it will be a very important day, as it's the first time you're seeing this level of intensity or participation. I think there is a lot of anxiety among everybody over what the result is going to be. Thousands of protesters carried out a three-day protest in Georgia against crimes of the country's foreign policy and immigration detention system. The rallies end today as protesters converge on Fort Benning, Georgia, to demand the closure of the controversial U.S. Military School of the Americas, which has a long history of providing military training against left-wing movements in Latin America. Our correspondent, Abby Martin, has more. We're here in Georgia today at the ninth annual action to shut down the Stewart Detention Center, the largest for-profit adult immigration facility in the U.S., run by the Corrections Corporation of America. Thousands of activists have marched to the gates of the facility, many risking arrest to protest a center that they say rips families apart by keeping people for up to two years at a time. They're also calling attention to the human rights violations that are taking place here for 1,700 individuals, where they say people are being held for up to 23 hours a day. This action is linked to the 25-year vigil to shut down the School of Americas to signify how mass deportations are directly related to the school and its effects, especially in light of the school beginning to train ICE agents this year. Now, now, many people are pointing out that those fleeing the violence from U.S.-backed wars in Latin America should not be caged. They should be welcomed and linking their struggle to the broader refugee crisis worldwide. Reporting for Telesort English, I'm Abby Martin here in Lumpkin, Georgia. Two dams burst at an iron ore mine in the southern region of Brazil, killing 11 people and seriously damaging the environment. Locals at the town of Regencia in Espirito Santo protested what they called the death of the River Doce. They blamed the Australian-based BHP Billiton LTD mining company for the ecological disaster. Previously, Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff had slapped preliminary fines of $67 million against the company. Many of those affected by the environmental catastrophe are asking for further actions against BHP Billiton. They are saying that what happened is a real emergency. They killed the river. The symbol of San Marco are the people that live here. Central American Institute of Fiscal Studies, ICEFI, presented its analysis on the region's economic situation for 2016. In spite of everything we live this year related to corruption and in Guatemala the reassignation of the president and the vice president in macroeconomic terms, we don't see any important change and the region continues growing an average of 4.5 points approximately. And we see that stability in the region, mainly in the countries south of Central America, Panama, Costa Rica and Nicaragua. On other side, we have the economies that grow the least and that gather around 75% of all the poor people in the region. The North Triangle is an open field for people to migrate, trying to find opportunities out of these countries. Macroeconomics measures the exportations and importations, the devaluation of the national currency and the state's expenses, but it doesn't measure how it disaffects the life of the majorities. El gobierno le está apostando the government has its bets on the recommendations of the International Monetary Fund, which are inhuman recommendations that only privilege some sectors in order to maintain foreign trade, which favors transnational corporations and powerful nations, affecting the poor nations like Honduras. So the hand of the IMF with obsolete measures that don't see the social part but only the financial aspects are kind of economic totalitarianism that does not kill with missiles and guns but is killing the Honduran people with hunger by reducing the incomes and the social benefits. The Central American governments will declare 2015 a good year in economic accomplishments but for millions of Central Americans who still live in poverty this announcement won't mean any good news. Gerardo Torres, Telesur, Central America. 
close to 2 million people have been left without power in the Crimean port city of Sevastopol. The blackout was caused by two power transmission towers blown up in the Ukrainian region of Kherson. Crimean officials declared a state of emergency. They immediately scrambled to restore electricity to hospitals and schools, among other vital public facilities. Initial reports suggest the transmission towers were sabotaged. The reports surfaced as right-wing Ukrainians gathered outside the Ministry of the Interior in Kiev, demanding a full power blockade of Crimea. All of the diesel generator sets have been checked. We have 217 sets on the territory of the city of Sevastopol. They are mostly located at the social services facilities. So these are schools, hospital, kindergartens. So with any scenario, these facilities will have electricity. Egyptians have begun the second phase of the parliamentary elections after three years without an assembly amid accusations of undermined political freedom and repression. Reports reveal there has been a low voter turnout in the first of two days of voting taking place in 13 of the country's 27 provinces. The Egyptian president Abdel Fattah el-Sisi said the elections are a step toward democratic reform. Voters in the remaining 14 provinces had cast their votes in October. Turnout then was estimated at about 26 percent. Pro-CC candidates are expected to win the second phase by a landslide as they did during the first. I hope the winning candidate cleans the country and answers to the people when they go to him, instead of running away from them. We do not want somebody who will come kiss the hands of the people at the cafes, but then after he's elected, he's nowhere to be seen. If he does that, he's not loyal to the country. China has accused the United States of carrying out political provocations with its patrols in the disputed South China Sea as tensions around the strategic waterways mount. High-level officials said Washington is testing Beijing's resolve regarding freedom of navigation. Earlier in November, U.S. B-52 bombers flew near some of the artificial islands, signaling Washington's determination to challenge Beijing's claim. At the end of October, the USS Lassen, a guided missile destroyer, challenged territorial limits around one of the islands. Facts that have marked the course of history. Productions designed in the English language and made for the English-speaking world. This is Documentary. Watch it on telesur.net slash English. Tell us, sir, wherever the news, you'll be there.